everybody, it's Magic Prepper, and we're talking about what some might call an LVAW, others might call it an M13B, and I'm gonna call it a Sig Sauer MCX Legacy. This is a Gen 1 chambered in 300 blackout, and it's one of the best gun purchases I've ever made. This thing is super reliable, fun to shoot, and I definitely think there's a use case scenario for 300 blackout when it comes to preparedness. So we're gonna talk about that today. We're gonna talk about the accessories that you see here on the gun, as well as the specifications. We'll talk about the zero that I chose based on the ammunition selection and the limitations provided by the platform itself. And we'll just talk about some other things related to this particular firearm. This gun is awesome. I think 300 blackout has a lot of benefits that might outweigh 556 in certain scenarios. And I also think that the MCX is kind of leading the way in the sense of future firearm platforms. So before we get started on that, in case you weren't aware, on YouTube, it's very difficult to monetize videos that have 30 round magazines in them. And this is a Lancer 30 round, 300 blackout magazine. So because of that, we do have a sponsor for today's video. All right, so this video sponsor is Aura. Aura is a service that gives you identity theft protection, password management, a VPN, an antivirus, and fraud monitoring all in one location. I recently had one of my personal PayPal accounts hacked, and in that process, I thought I needed to figure out how it got hacked and where they get the information. Signed up for Aura, they immediately detected my information on the dark web, showed me that might have been leaked from a, let's just say, non-named PDF editor that's online, and in that process, I was able to change my passwords and fix some of the damage that was done. So Aura is awesome. They're sponsoring this video. And you know those like shady gun websites that you guys go on? Signature MCXLT 762 times 39 for $999 free shipping right to my door? Yes. Yeah, they're not so trustworthy, are they? So if you're doing that kind of stuff, and you know Aura likes guns because they're sponsoring this video, so I think that's also a plus for them, make sure you check them out. There's a link down in the description where you can get a free 14-day trial to see what kind of information is out there on the dark web. And part of their monitoring service is helping you remove your personal information from data brokers by submitting opt-out requests. They also offer an app that's super easy to use, and you can turn on a virtual private network right there on the app at the touch of a button. So make sure you guys check out Aura, tell them Magic Trevor sent you, use that link down in the description to get that free 14 day trial and let's get back to the Sig Sauer MCX. All right so here's the Sig Sauer MCX Legacy in 300 blackout like I said. We'll go ahead and safety check it first before we get started here. Everything's empty and good to go and we'll go ahead and start here at the muzzle and just work our way back to give you some ideas about the accessories that are on here and some of the specifications of the firearm itself. So right in front here we have the Silencer Co Omega 300 suppressor. Awesome suppressor basically designed for 300 blackout, makes this thing ridiculously quiet when you run subsonics through it. And if you're gonna get a 300 blackout, you should plan to suppress it because you lose a lot of the benefits of 300 blackout if you're not running suppressed. So that's kind of the reason why I wanted this platform. Now I'll go ahead and screw this off. And what's nice is that the Omega 300 and Silencer Co ASR compatible suppressors have a quick detach system comes right off and then I can swap this onto my 5.56 rifles or a 308 or whatever else I want to swap it to. So I really like that about the system. And here we have the three prong flash hider from Silencer Co that has the ASR attachment on it. So very easy system to use. Now, moving further back, we have the Surefire M340V. Now this is a 250 lumen output light, but it does have IR capability. And one thing I like about the V series of Surefire lights is that you can actually turn the lamp head here and you can turn it from white light to IR all the way to off. And what's really nice about that is that once it's in the off position, you're not gonna accidentally discharge your light when you don't want to, and you can basically turn it to whatever other function you need at that time. So not only will it possibly conserve battery, but it stops you from identifying yourself in a dark environment when you don't mean to. So I do like that functionality of it, and it comes with a nice M-lock or Picatinny mount that then kind of hugs it up at the uh, one o'clock position really nicely on your rail. Okay. Right underneath it, we have an Arasaka hand stop. I like hand stops and I'm pretty much using them exclusively now on all of my AR style or semi-automatic platform 
firearms because at the end of the day, I'm not really finding the benefits of vertical foregrips as much anymore. Angled foregrips are okay, but the handstop really gives me a great reference point while also giving me a little bit more to hang on to while having the ability to use it as a barricade stop if need be. So I really like hand stops lately. We'll move further back. Here we have the Surefire pressure switch. This is the momentary as well as the constant on switch, which you basically want to run a pressure pad if you're going to run some type of light in the offhand position. If you're going to run it on the strong hand side because you're running an offset red dot or something like that, then you don't necessarily need it as much, at least in my opinion. But that is what I'm running here on top of the rail for light activation. Okay. Now, over here, behind all of this going on with the flashlight is where the short stroke gas piston system is. And what's nice about that is it has a gas regulator system built in that has a plus or minus setting, which is specifically for subsonic or supersonic, which is why this platform, the MCX, is so good for 300 blackout, as well as running any kind of suppressed system, including 556, and now they have the 762 by 39. But at the end of the day, it's pretty much specifically designed for being suppressed, and I really like that about this gun, okay? Now, moving further back from there, we have the Aimpoint Comp M5. Now, this is a super high-end, really nice red dot. It's basically bomb-proof. The Comp M5S might be a little bit more durable because it moves the battery cavity here down to the bottom. But at the end of the day, aim points are awesome. You really can't go wrong. And the whole plan of this gun from the beginning was to have night vision compatibility in the sense of passive aiming if that day ever comes where I can finally afford some nods, right? Well, I have the IR functionality here on the Surefire, and then I have the Aimpoint Comp M5, which definitely is night vision compatible, on a Scalarworks Leap 1.93 inch mount, which is a really nice mount. It's quick to attach, and it gets you a nice heads up position when you're using the optic. And at the same time, it's night vision compatible because it's tall enough to actually interact with your nods. So I have this all set up for that eventuality of getting night vision in mind, which is also why it's a 300 blackout because it's also very quiet, which might matter in the sense of trying to keep your signature down at the lowest level possible. So moving further back from there, I have the Aimpoint 3XC magnifier. Now the 3XC magnifier is super nice as well excellent optical clarity, and I barely needed to adjust it at all when it came to zeroing it with the red dot, which there are adjustments for here, but it's also on a Scalarworks leap mount. It folds off to the side like that, no problem if you don't want to use it, and then you flip it over and now you have 3X magnification. And on this gun, 3X is all you need because in, at the end of the day, 300 blackouts, no, real terminal effectiveness is going to be at around two or 300 yards. And on this gun specifically, I know at 300 yards, it starts to drop about 36 inches based on my zero and ammunition selection. So we'll talk about that here in just a second. But this magnifier red dot setup, perfect for this. And you don't see any backup sites on here. And that's because I haven't ordered them yet. They're not available to the public yet. But Scalarworks is working on some backup sites that actually have a 1.93 inch co-witness, specifically designed to go with their Scalarworks leap mounts. So that way, if your red dot goes down, you can flip those up and still use them right through the optical tube. And you don't have to worry about removing everything or doing any of that. So I'm waiting for those to come out. And this will have those backup irons once that time comes. So real quick, while we're here, let's talk about the ammunition situation. So here in this translucent Lancer mag, I've got Sig Sauer 220 grain OTMs, which are subsonic. And then I also run in the non-translucent Lancer mag, which is why I like Lancer mags, because it's very easy to keep your ammunition organized and visibly uh, easy to check whether or not you're using a certain type of ammunition. This is Federal Fusion soft points, 150 grain. Now, why did I choose this ammunition? This is a nine inch barrel with a one in five twist. A one in five twist rate is very fast. This gun was specifically designed for subsonic heavy weight ammunition. 220 grains is a very heavy bullet in a 30 caliber round. Well, because of that, if you're gonna go fast in the sense of having some supers, which you definitely wanna have because terminally, these are gonna have a lot more effect in the sense of hitting soft tissue. Well, if you're going to run, let's say 110 grain VMAX, this barrel twist rate is so fast that those projectiles might actually strip their jackets and cause baffle strikes inside of your suppressor, which then causes a lot of problems for you at the end of the day when you own something that's broken that you can't necessarily fix or sell or do whatever with because it's an NFA item. So at the end of the day, this needs heavier bullets because of that one in five twist rate. So I found that these 150 grain Federal Fusion soft points do a great job in the sense of terminal ballistics, but also have uh, all of the requirements to run out of a one in five twist rate out of a nine inch barrel without having any issues. So that's the choice that I chose there. And then based on this ammunition selection with the 220 grain 
SIG OTMs for the subsonics and the 150 grain fusions. And then I also run 150 grain full metal jacket boat tails from Fioki for range ammo. All of those are zeroed at 30 yards through this red dot. And so why does that matter? Well, I zeroed the supersonic fusion rounds at 30 yards. And it's hard to find an exact zero for every single 300 blackout out there. But based on this ammunition, based on the barrel length and the velocities and the optic mounting height and everything else, once I ran it through a ballistic calculator, I found that 30 yards will get me out to 200 yards with a four inch distance of elevation between zero to 200 yards. And what that means is that this gun will shoot four inches high at 100 yards and four inches low at 200 yards. So that gives me a decent amount of spread to hit out to 200 without having to really adjust anything and knowing that I'm going to be on target one way or the other within that range, which really is the terminal effective range of this gun. So I'll show you some screenshots here of my targets where you can see where I zeroed at 30 yards. You can see the difference that that made at 50 yards when it came to the three different types of ammunition. And you can see that even the subsonics are still holding a pretty good zero compared to the supersonics when I made that decision. So hopefully all that makes sense to you, um, but there's a lot that goes into choosing the right zero for your 300 blackout. That's how I found mine. And hopefully that information gives you a little bit of, of help, okay? Now, moving to the back. They do have the QD sockets here right in the receiver, which I really like. And then here is the Sig Sauer PCB pistol brace. It's, it is what it is, but basically the reason I'm using this brace is because I have a minimalist plus stock that I will add at some point once I can form one this and make it an SBR through the NFA, which, you know, let's be honest, shouldn't exist anymore, but because we're still trying to do what we can legally, that's where we're at. And that gives me the most similarity between that stock and a pistol brace as I could get. So that's why we're doing that. Let's go ahead and flip it over. Okay. Now, on this side, we have a T-Rex arm sling. Good sling. I think it works fine. And there's a lot of good slings out there, but this one definitely does the job. And we have a sling keeper, which is also from T-Rex arms. That kind of helps keep it organized. So I really like that. You can see here's where the QDs are for the Scholar Works mounts. And the pistol grip on here is the Sig Sauer reduced angle grip, which I think reduced angle is kind of the way of the future, right? And that's what we're doing, especially when you have a shorter barreled firearm like this one, okay? This is a pistol, don't forget, it's a pistol. And then the PCB brace can easily fold, which is really nice because you have a very compact package and you can still shoot with this folded, unlike some of your AR-15 stock adapters. So that's really nice in case you're in a vehicle and you're in transport and you still have to engage quickly, but you don't have time to use your stock or you don't have enough space for it or whatever it is. It gives you that option, which I find to be beneficial. So that's the full rundown of this gun. This is an awesome, awesome gun. I really enjoy it. Let's talk about 300 Blackout in the sense of preparedness and why that might matter for you in the sense of having it in your inventory. All right, so let's talk about use case scenario for 300 Blackout. Honestly, this is now my go-to home defense firearm because at the end of the day, with the suppressor on, it is so quiet. I don't have to worry about damaging anyone's ears. I don't even have to worry about waking up my neighbors. And in the sense of an SHTF scenario, there's a lot of application where being quiet and stealthy and removing as much of your signature as possible could be the difference of survival. So I think that 300 Blackout definitely brings a lot to the table. And the fact that you can switch between subsonic and supersonic so easily and still maintain a relatively similar zero while engaging targets further out if you need to with more terminal ballistics at the end of the day is a good option to have. The other thing I like this gun for is a vehicle gun because it's small and it's very compact. And once you go down to a barrel this short, nine inches, you really don't get what you need out of the 5.56 at that point, but you still get almost the full capability out of 300 Blackout. So the cartridge was designed specifically for a shorter barrel. So if you want lightweight, small package that you can easily move around in a vehicle or whatever else it is you're gonna be doing, 300 Blackout's very hard to beat and it can still drop pigs, deer, whatever else you need it to do. And if you're gonna run suppressed, I mean, this thing, is just made for a suppressor hands down. And with a seven inch suppressor on the end, which is what you see right here with the anchor brake on the end, which is Silencer Co's muzzle brake device they like to put on the end of their suppressors apparently. Well, the total package is now 16 inches, which is the same as what a lot of people's standard M4 carbines is, but they don't have it suppressed yet and they don't have full capability if they chop it down to a nine inch barrel. So those are all things to consider. And so, like I said, home defense, property defense, and for a vehicle gun, really hard to beat 300 blackout will this be my go-to if i literally have to leave my property and go off and fight in who knows what kind of an environment no i think 556 still has its merits when it comes to that but 
for everything else, I think having a 300 blackout is really not a bad idea. And once I combine this with night vision and everything else that I have planned for it in the future, there's not much you can do in the sense of stealth better than this. So I just wanted to bring that to your attention in the sense of use case for 300 blackout and why I think this is a good thing to have. At the end of the day, let me know in the comments below if you guys have any other suggestions about accessories or zeros or anything else related to 300 blackout that you wanted to put out there. And if you have any questions about this setup or the MCX in general, understand that the MCX Gen 1, the Legacy, is the lightest version of it as well. This is lighter than the new MCX Spear LT. So there are some changes. Yes, the LT as well as the Virtus might have better longevity when it comes to their bolt faces and things of that nature. But at the end of the day, if you want the lightest possible MCX, it's still the Gen 1. And this thing is still good to go. I don't have any issues with it at all. I feel 100% confident in in this firearm and no i am not related to or affiliated with sig in any way shape or form i just like their guns quite a bit some of their optics not all of their optics but some of their optics but in general i like sig sour as a company and i think they do a good job with most of their firearms all i'm saying is you really can't go wrong with this gun i wanted to share it with everybody without anything else to say about it that's going to be it for magic prepper